Manila, New Year's Eve 2020. It had been a difficult year for the Philippines fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. The country had endured one of the world's longest and most grueling lockdowns. Across the city, millions of people were enjoying low-key celebrations. In the heart of Makati, the financial and entertainment centre of the country, a young 23-year-old flight attendant, Christine de Serra, was enjoying a night out with friends and colleagues. However, the night would end in tragedy and quickly turn to confusion and then accusations of rape and murder. Today we examine the strange death of Christine de Serra. Christine de Serra was born in 1997 in General Santos, one of the southernmost cities in the Philippines on the island of Mindanao. The second of four siblings, she was a bright, likeable and intelligent student who graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Media Studies from the University of the Philippines Mindanao in Davao City. Upon graduating, Christine left her province for Manila and took a job working for PAL Express, a budget airline and subsidiary of Philippine Airlines, the country's national carrier. By all accounts, it was a job she loved and excelled at. It was New Year and Christine decided to celebrate with her friends. The group headed for the City Grand Garden Hotel a modern, chic hotel in the heart of Makati and walking distance from major shopping malls, nightlife and the financial district. Christine was the only female in the group. The other 11 companions were all male, a mix of colleagues, friends and acquaintances. The group was captured on hotel CCTV around 11.20pm leaving the two rooms they had booked for the night, rooms 2207 and 2209. In high spirits, they headed for the hotel's classy rooftop bar. 2020 had been a tough year for the Philippines and the airline industry with the COVID pandemic, but tonight was a celebration. Christine and her friends enjoyed a meal and drinks at the rooftop bar. The group of friends also posed for photos and partied together, waiting to celebrate the new year. Around 11.30pm, Christine called her mother. She asked permission to continue staying out with her friends, to which her mother agreed. A short time later, Christine was again captured on CCTV. Clearly enjoying the night, she would call her mother a second time after midnight to update her on the ongoing celebrations. At 2.50 a.m., Christine would again be seen on hotel CCTV. Other hotel guests would also be seen throughout the night, as well as the hotel concierge delivering an extra mattress the group had requested. The man in the white baseball hat with her would later be identified as her friend Chen. Between 3.15 and 5.05 a.m., Christine would be captured no fewer than five more times on the hotel's CCTV security system. She can be seen coming and going from the hotel room and heading back and forth from the rooftop bar. She appeared relaxed and could be seen laughing and joking while being accompanied by different members of the group. Before being captured for the final time, at 6.23 a.m., being carried back to the room by her friend Della Serna. The last photo of Christine would show her slumped in the bathroom of room 2207, the end of a long night of drinking and partying with friends to welcome the new year. Sadly, this would be the last photo taken of Christine alive. The morning of January 1st and Manila awoke to a new year. 
members of Christine's group that had partied and stayed overnight at the City Grand Garden Hotel began to drift away from around 7.30am, their departures being captured once again on hotel CCTV. At around 10am, Christine was found unconscious in a made-up bed in the bathtub of room 2207. Initially mistaken for being asleep, two of her friends, de Guzman and de la Serna, left her until they decided to check on her again around noontime. At this point, they realised Christine was starting to turn blue and appeared not to be breathing. In a panic, both de Guzman and de la Serna summoned help and hotel management attempted to revive her with CPR before being taken from the room in a wheelchair by hotel staff. She was then rushed to Makati Medical Centre, but it was too late. Christine was declared dead on arrival at 12.25pm. Christine had been dead for some time, and there was nothing the medical staff could do to save her. The hospital then reported the death to the Makati City Police Station. An autopsy on the body of Christine was scheduled for 9am the following day, but in a bizarre twist, her body was embalmed before the autopsy was conducted and before crucial forensic samples could be collected. This was done without the family's consent and would later become a major point of contention between the family and investigators. On January the 11th, the post-mortem findings concluded her death was consistent with a ruptured aortic aneurysm and the death was ruled natural. The exact cause of this is unclear, but the report states it has been linked to factors such as high blood pressure, infection, hypertension or sudden traumatic injury. The examiner also noted bruises on Christine's right hand, right thigh, knees, ankles and right foot. Deep healed lacerations were also reported during the genital exam. However, the report noted that Christine's heart weighed 500 grams, more than the normal 300 grams for a healthy adult, and that she was likely suffering from undiagnosed hypertension. In fact, Christine had complained of a weird feeling unlike a hangover during the course of the night, and the examiner thought it was consistent with a ruptured aortic aneurysm, which can cause symptoms such as weakness and nausea from internal bleeding. Sadly, the medical examiner believed this condition had developed over years, and it was only a matter of when and not if Christine would eventually succumb to this condition. Ultimately, the examiner ruled out homicide as a possible cause of death. Manner of death as homicide is ruled out in De Serra's case. The details were then reported to the PNP. However, it was at this point, sometime between the autopsy being filed and the report to the PNP, that the case became referred to as a rape slay. The PNP stated, the cause of death could have been natural, However, lacerations on her body had been found, and sperm was also found in her genitalia indicating sexual contact prior to death. It is unclear where the traces of semen came from, as it was not indicated in the autopsy report. The PNP sent separate statements declaring the case solved, and that three of the men, De La Serna, Galido and Halili, were already in custody. The other men who attended the party, who were still at large, were then listed as wanted and their names and photos circulated in the media. The PNP gave them an ultimatum, telling them to surrender to police immediately or be hunted down. By this time, the nature of the case had attracted widespread local and international media attention. Some news sites began describing the case as a gang rape. The news spurred Filipino boxing champion Manny Pacquiao to offer 500,000 pesos or $10,000 reward for the arrest of Christine's alleged rapists and killers. It wasn't long before Filipino netizens 
began speculating about the case on social media. As the case went viral, it led to large amounts of inaccurate and hateful information to spread on sites such as Facebook and Twitter. Some criticised aspects of Christine's behaviour, such as the dress she wore, her binge drinking and alleged drug taking, which would later be proven false. Others blamed the men and branded them rapists, while hashtags such as Justice for Christine, Stop Victim Blaming, Protect Drunk Girls, Men Are Trash and Death Penalty began trending on Twitter. On the same day, Christine's body was flown back to General Santos City. The two-hour flight, her final trip, before a family funeral in her hometown. It was attended by family and friends and widely covered in the local media. It was at this time that Dr. Marici Ramos, a friend and spokesman for the De Serra family, told reporters the body had been submitted for a second autopsy. They believed the initial findings of possible death by natural causes was inaccurate and thought her injuries were consistent with rape. However, cracks had already started to show in the police investigation. The police admitted it had been a mistake to embalm Christine's body before the autopsy was conducted. It also emerged that most of the defendants were openly gay men and, according to their attorney, had been pressured during the police investigation into stating that illegal drugs were used during the party. One of the men later said he was disowned by his father after being publicly outed due to the case. Authorities also admitted they had not collected sufficient evidence from the crime scene to investigate the circumstances of Christine's death. Drug tests on five of the eleven men were released and all proved to be negative. Indeed, a sachet found in the hotel room, which was believed to contain crystal meth or a party drug, was in fact table salt. On January the 27th, in the face of mounting questions and criticisms of the botched investigation, the Philippine National Police revised their report to state they believed the death was due to natural causes. They noted her enlarged heart and that this supported the theory of undiagnosed hypertension. This was in line with what had been noted in the original autopsy. It was speculated her job as a flight attendant may have either caused or exacerbated this condition. Almost three months after Christine de Serra's death, the Makati Prosecutor's Office dismissed rape and homicide cases against all 11 men due to lack of evidence. This was largely based on the results of the second autopsy. The prosecutor said there was insufficient evidence to prove penetration or sexual activity, and that no mixed DNA was observed in de Serra's underwear. It concluded that while it could not categorically rule out rape through sexual assault, the DNA analysis on the autopsy report proved no other DNA came in contact with the deceased. The report showed the presence of semen in two of the beddings of room 2209, one of the rooms the group had rented. The sample had been taken from a white blanket and white bedding, However, the report could not prove the bed had been used by Christine. It also noted the presence of semen in the room did not prove that rape was committed. Christine's mother, Sharon, had also alleged that Christine's drink was spiked, but toxicology reports proved inconclusive. The De Serra family said they would not give up, and the closure of the case would not stop them looking for the truth and justice for Christine. The case of Christine de Serra was a controversial one, largely because of a botched police investigation and a resulting social media storm where the public, celebrities and those online jumped to conclusions without being in possession of all the facts. What is clear is that in all the confusion, a young woman with a bright future ahead of her lost her life 
on what should have been a night of celebration. Christine de Serra is laid to rest in her native General Santos city. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you support what we do, consider supporting us on Patreon. The link will be in the description below. Thanks for watching and stay safe. Please share your thoughts in the comments below.